What's up guys, we're here at the Hollywood Mechanic and today we're going to be doing uh, cat temp sensor probes on an Aventador S, but it's very similar for any Aventador SVS. <laughs> All right, so these are very common failure points for the Aventadors. What you're gonna have is on each side, a module like this that interfaces with the temp probes. And then these are the probes. You'll have ones that are a 12 millimeter and ones that are a 14 millimeter fitting. But you have to be very careful to bend these to, to go into the engine bay so they're not contacting anything else, not gonna be rubbing up against anything else. And you don't wanna bend the tip, obviously. This fits into the catalytic converter and this will give the temperature uh, reading back to the module which it interprets and sends back to the car. If you get a failure with one of these you may go into a safe limp mode. You may have cat temperature overheat warnings. They're very common. When you take them off sometimes they'll have turned black on the back although it doesn't necessarily mean it's bad or, or it's not bad. But if you do get those problems you're going to want to get the control modules and the probes and then uh, replace all of them at once. All right, great. So um, they're going to look a little different on most of the cars. A lot of people change out the exhaust systems, uh, including this client who uses this one on the track uh, only. So he's got test pipes here that are uh, racing approved and they have relocated the sensors into a different place. On the factory cats, they're going to be more toward the bottom side and there are access panels underneath through the wheel well that you can access them. Basically, you're just gonna take uh, for removal. Uh, you're gonna wanna be really careful because of the heat. All right guys, just something to remember when you're working on these thermocouples or the exhaust gas temperature sensors, make sure the car is completely cold, as in hasn't been driven for like 20 hours because if you have any temperature at all in that exhaust, it'll bind up the teeth and you're gonna strip the threads on the cats and that is extremely difficult to fix. You probably got to remove the cat. The heat that happens on these, they do seize into place. So if you feel resistance when you're backing out, you need to basically go back and forth, back and forth, and try to wiggle any sediment that might be trapped in the threads out. Uh, whenever they did the test pipes on this, they uh, thankfully put some anti-seize so the threads did not adhere and we pull them out just like this and you can see where the tip is uh been burnt a little bit that's probably going to be on most of the temps probes that are have failed the hardest part about putting this in is when you put it in the if you have to make a bend it can cause this fitting to not want to sit down on the thread so you need to have a little bit of a space where it's straight so that you can get your threads from your uh, sensors down onto uh, the bong and it does look like they put a little too much anti-seize you can see it coming off on my finger there and that may be what caused these to fail is it does look like anti-seize ran down and you can see a hot burn mark at the end there so you, you just need to put it brush it on the threads of the bong lightly and then put the sensors in and screw them down. Don't try to put them on the sensors themselves. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one here, which is a 12 mil. And it's not normally this open either. Normally we're doing an alternator on this car as well. So that's why we have so much space, but typically it's not this open. So there we go. We got our two probes out. Yeah, you can see a nice little streak there. All right, so we're going to do that to both sides. And once we've got that done, we'll raise the car and I'll show you underneath the way that you route those lines. Clip away the zip ties that hold it in place. And right behind here is where you have the plug. You don't have to remove the forward wheel liner, excuse me. There we go. And then in here is the other plug as well. This is to the probes module. We can unplug each probe just keep in mind where they were routed along here um, this is clipped to the sway bar bushing area we're going to go ahead and cut that and we'll replace this with a new zip tie there and the same for here you can just clip these zip ties the fittings that hold them to the car you don't need to remove you can just clip the zip tie pull it out 
and put a new zip tie through it there. And then these are good to be pulled out. You can do that through the other side. Again, you don't need to remove this clip here, but just be careful when you're running the wires that you don't bend the probes in the wrong way or too much. You want to keep them as straight as you can going through there and curving around. So the best strategy is to put the new ones through and pull them through on the other side. Then when you use two little, I think it's seven millimeter bolts that hold these probes to the brackets and we'll place the new ones on over top of it. There's one and there will be a washer of that as well. Take the other one off as well. You can just push the main harness out of the way and get that to come down and off. Don't forget the routing of the wires that go there. You can see how it's like change color. Yeah, so you can see the difference in color here where it's gotten darker, where it's, it's gotten definitely gotten hot compared to the, the way it was from the factory. Saying you don't have to remove this clip. On the Aventador S, it's a major pain to remove it because it has this oil cooler here. So what you're gonna do is do, when you pull it out, pull the 12 mil probe before you pull the 14 mil. The 12 mil has enough space to fit in with the 14 mil probe still there. And then the same when you reinstall it, you're gonna put the 14 mil probe in first. And you're gonna to need to, ush to assist that. So we'll assist that here just like. There we go. That one's through. And then we can keep the angle properly there. And then fit the 12 mil socket through there as well. Okay, now that both are through there, we'll go through the other side and bend them to where we need them to be. So we'll pull those in later. Uh, we'll go ahead and route this up. Obviously, one is going to go right here and be zip tied there. The other one is going to go right there and be zip tied right there. We've already put our new modules in up at the top. So we will just... Love these in then. All right, I showed you how to sneak these through the clip there so that you don't have to remove that on our clip. Uh, once you have it in, you'll have the pipe sticking out straight like this. Uh, what you're going to want to do again is like carefully bend this and route it. Now, I do have this brace up because of the alternator job, so I'm going to bend this down a little bit. We're going to keep this kind of free from vibrating and rubbing up against other things. Uh, it, it's okay if it touches other things. It's not a big deal, but you just don't want it to be constantly rubbing. And then we're going to we're going to put a bend in this here because I can see we've got a little bit of an angle we're going to need. So I'm going to put it a good inch and a half up from the end of the probe. That way the probe stays straight and this way the fitting will want to go straight onto the teeth of the bong there. And then I'm going to bend this with my hand, trying not to kink it too hard and get it bent back. And I'm going to go under this one here and we're going to go. There we go. And so now both lines are run pretty, pretty cleanly there. If you want to put anti-seize on the bong, do it only on the threads of the bong, not on the fitting of the probe. If it gets onto the probe, it will read incorrect temperatures and it can burn up the probe and cause a failure as well. For the temp sensor, whoever did it again, put so much anti-seize on it that there's no risk of it jamming up. But straight from the factory brand new, uh, I would always advise instead of loosening it first, tighten it, like get it to budge in a tightening direction and then loosen it. And then if you feel any kind of resistance at all, tighten it half a turn, loosen it three quarters of a turn, and tighten it half a turn, loosen three quarters. All right, guys, so, um, Pretty easy to do cat temp probes. Again, like one of the symptoms you're gonna see uh, if you have bad cat temp probes is car is sitting and it's cold. You start it up and it immediately is telling you cat over temp. Um, 
you may also get uh, faults in the ECM for short to be positive, short to ground. Uh, obviously, while you're doing the job, make sure you check for loose wires or damaged wires, rat um, chewed wires if it's a car that hasn't been run for a while. But uh, it's pretty simple. If you're doing oxygen sensors at the same time, uh, there are panels underneath to, to access oxygen sensors from. Just uh, make sure that they are numbered one through four, that you number them and replace them back where they go uh, and plug them in the proper connectors.